Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. In today's class, we are actually going to talk about a very important concept which uh, is a fundamental concept I would say in all the scientific inquiries. The topic is to understand the difference between correlation and causality. All right. So, we will see that all the different sciences we are trying to actually pursue a holy grail called causality as if you know where A leads to B, we want to understand the fact, the linkage between two, two factors you know for, with certainty. But that sometimes is really very difficult, I mean most of the cases that is really very difficult uh, thing to actually uh, obtain you know like to make sure that uh, A actually leads to B. Now, we will we'll talk about it and we will talk about how correlation and causality is, are different and how you know they are important in, in their uh, you know understandings. Uh, but before we get into that, I will start with a story and this story is about a disease called scurvy. Now, if you know about the, it is a very interesting story and if you know about how you know the scurvy disease was so prevalent in Europe. Uh, during medieval time and how it used to be a menaces for the sailors and how actually uh, you know people discovered a remedy to it and what happened after that. I think this is a very interesting story to begin because that will also give us an idea about how correlation and causality are different. So, let us talk about it. So, scurvy is a disease that actually you know makes your gums uh, you know uh, you know uh, infected with fungus and you really it, it is really severe and you can actually die. So, around 2 million people died due to scurvy. I am talking about the time when Columbus was discovering America and uh, the sailors from Europe were trying to you know uh, go to uh, all the corners of the world. So, uh, the sailors were really important at the time and, and at the same time it was really a risky business because of no other reason but scurvy. There could be other reasons, but scurvy was one of the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, formidable reason why you know the sailors were dying. Now, fast forward is uh, 1744, and I'm talking about a person named James Lind. Now, James Lind, uh, then you know. Uh, he did a sort of a controlled experiment. Now, what is controlled experiment? We will talk about it later. So, what happened is that somehow people got to come to this intuition that it is probably the you know the citric fruits like the lemons and oranges that actually uh, you know helpful to curb the disease scurvy. So, uh, you know the Jam captain James Lean, he's a captain. He did a controlled experiment where he had a group of people whom he did not provide the lemons and oranges and whereas, there was another group of people whom he did provide lemons and oranges and interestingly, it was found that the people who were given lemons and oranges, they are they did not have scurvy. So, it means that the lemons and oranges are actually helping them to get rid of this for you know this dangerous disease. So, so the you know the, if I want to represent it in a diagram, so I can say that oranges, lemons actually could prevent scurvy. Now, the question is, uh, so it is all right. So, you know people understood it, people actually the, the sailors used to now take lots of oranges and lemons when they are traveling you know to other parts of the world and it was all good. Now, fast forward we will come to around another 150 years, so it is uh, the year 1875. Now, then there was an expedition that was supposed to happen to the Arctic regions. Uh, so, you know, the, in Arctic it is really cold and people thought that it is perhaps a good idea if they can actually um, create something out of the oranges and lemons that can help them to, you know, have something warm and, you know, like they can enjoy their drinks. So, what they did, they actually created some sort of, you know, lime soda and some hot drinks that they created by concentrating like they boiled oranges and lemons and you know created some juice and they carried that juice in bottle and that is also uh, good when you are traveling because then you the, the, the inventory the storage that you need to keep in your ship for you know for, for oranges and lemons vis-a-vis -vis the this uh, soda bottles. The soda bottles actually take much less space right. 
Now, so that is the idea and people actually, the, the sailors were actually trying to, you know, boil these lemons and oranges and they're, they're sort of packing all those uh, drinks in, in some bottles. Now, what happened is that, it, you know, surprising for everyone, everybody found that scurvy is back and the sailors are dying again. Now, that was something really tricky. I mean, we have already discovered that oranges and lemons can actually help you to get rid of scurvy. But then, uh, when I pack the oranges and lemons in a bottle, I see that the scurvy is back. Now, what is happening really here? Now, you know, another, uh, so there was another uh, argument at that time that people are also carrying meat, okay. Uh, so, of course, when you are, you know, traveling in sea and you are in, on water on basically uh, in the, inside the ocean for months, so your f meat is no longer fresh meat, right, it, it gets somewhat tainted. Now, people ended up thinking, and that was, there was experiment, so, you know, some sort of, you know, argument, there was a very strong argument made that it is not, it is, the scurvy has nothing to do with these oranges and lemons anymore, but it is a tainted meat, the tainted meat which is causing scurvy. Now that's rather uh, interesting. So then, you know, so then people thought that, you know, perhaps if if they, you know, remove the diet of tainted meat from their meal, perhaps uh, they will be, you know, uh, free from scurvy. So, you know, uh, sailors tried that and it was unfortunately, it was not, it didn't work. So scurvy was not going. Now then that is, you know, that become a very critical question, then what is exactly happening here? And that is where we'll understand the implication of what it means by correlation and what it means by causality, okay. So when he say that, you know, when uh, Captain Lind said that oranges and lemons prevent scurvy, so it was like, you know, answering what is causing, uh, what, what is, you know, what is actually preventing scurvy. So it is, the answer is oranges and lemons, but nobody has a clue why oranges and lemons are actually preventing scurvy, all right. Uh, or here also, people are talking about it's tainted meat which is causing scurvy, but people had no clue why tainted meat is causing scurvy. So there is a difference when I say uh, correlation causality. So one thing we have to understand is that a question, there is something called a what question and a why question, okay. So when we say correlation, we are basically speaking about what, okay. So it's the oranges and lemons that is, you know, preventing scurvy, uh, but I don't know why. Or it is perhaps, you know, some people are arguing there's a plausible explanation that it's tainted meat which is causing scurvy, but I don't know why, okay. So that is a problem. So up until uh, I think it's uh, 1913 when Kashmir Funk actually discovered something called vitamin uh, and he's a Polish scientist. So when Kashmir Funk actually discovered uh, vitamin, so then people got to know that it is you know, some vitamin called vitamin C, which is actually preventing scurvy. So, in our previous, uh, you know, uh, diagram, when he said that oranges and lemons, they actually have something called vitamin C, and that vitamin C actually preventing scurvy, okay, preventing scurvy. So, now we can explain that, you know, so it is not, you know, not just an answer uh, what is preventing scurvy, like I can say, you know, oranges and lemons are preventing scurvy, but I can also say why oranges and lemons are preventing scurvy and the answer is vitamin C, oranges and lemons have vitamin C. So you see there is, you know, there is a what question here, what one, so what is preventing scurvy, this is orange and lemons, there is another what question what in oranges and lemons are preventing scurvy? So it is the vitamin C, right? Now we can further ask why vitamin C is preventing scurvy, right? That could be another what, yeah? Why vitamin C is preventing scurvy? <clears throat> so you have to go to that molecular structure of the vitamin or the micronutrients, whatever there in the vitamin and you have to see how it is interacting with the human cell, right? So there could be a series of what's, all right? The series of what questions to reach to the question, to reach to an answer why, okay? So these what questions, a series of what questions are, is giving you an answer to a why. So why is much deeper than what, as you can see. So you have to ask many, many words to go to, you know, the why part, right? So that is where uh, the causality comes in. Causality actually answers 
or let me okay i can write it here causality actually answers the why part all right and correlation actually help helps us to discover the what part okay so we can simply say that okay you know so and so uh, we can see you know uh, when he said that oranges and lemons are you know preventing scurvy we can simply say that you know this is basically a what question so we can simply see uh, you know if people are having a orange and lemon diet so they can they are actually safe from scurvy but why so then we have to go much deeper we have to ask many questions and then that is the you know that is something that actually we can call causality so that's the introduction of you know how correlation and causality are different and in the next le lecture i'm going to further detail about the differences in the correlation and causality thank you এটা কতক্ষণ হবে দিদি